स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया good afternoon everyone so in this lecture i am going to continue my discussion on uh, the solution to the optimal control systems so in today's lecture uh, we will continue our uh, solution methodology for optimal control problems or let me call this as optimal control theory so this is the discussion that we are continuing since the last lecture so recall we were trying to uh, we were trying to note down the steps of uh, the solution methodology for solving problems in optimal control theory via calculus of variation so recall my step 1 so this was uh, steps for solving optimal control problems so the step 1 was we assumed optimal conditions assume optimal optimal conditions and so in this we in this optimal condition we write down we write down our performance index or uh, or uh, the value or the functional at optimal values and we also so this is our performance index and we also write down our plant condition so the plant condition at the optimal value right so our plant condition okay so then the steps 2 the step 2 was we took our variations of the variables the variables here are the state and the control variables so variations in control and uh, so i would say set up variations in control and state variables so essentially wherever in our uh, in our uh, functional as well as the plant condition wherever we have uh, wherever we have the state variables we replace it by the state variable plus the perturbation right and then wherever we have control variable we replace it by the perturbed value of the control variable right uh, so we are writing it in in optimal condition so uh, let me denote uh, let me now denote with a star everywhere okay so we are perturbing at the optimal conditions okay so the star is at the uh, original value okay so the step 3 was we write down we write down our uh, jacobian for the optimal sorry uh, the functional for the optimal condition as well as the functional at the perturbed value so and further we introduce uh, the constraint via the lagrange multiplier so we introduce Uh, lagrange multiplier lambda of t so that introduces uh, this multiplier introduces the plant condition the plant condition which is x dot is equal to f of uh, f of x comma x dot comma t uh, as so plant condition as a as a holonomic uh, non holonomic constraint okay so non holonomic constraint okay so then uh, so this was where we stopped in the last lecture we will continue our discussion uh, for the next set of steps so step 4 is going to uh, in the step 4 we write down our integrand for the the functional at the optimal condition and the functional at the perturbed conditions namely the lagrangian okay so in step 4 
in step 4 we write down L of x star u star uh, x well the variables are x star u star t and we also write down uh, so this is at optimal so we write down the the value of this lagrangian at optimal conditions as well as at the perturbed condition right so l becomes uh, in our setup l is v so these are all at optimal conditions plus u star plus lambda uh, well comma lambda of t comma t okay plus uh, we have these uh, additional quantities so ds dt this is our cost function plus lambda times lambda of t times the plant condition so f of x bar star x bar dot star uh, well u star t minus minus x bar dot star uh, of t right okay so we have now the next well we replace this total derivative of s by its partial derivative which is partial s partial x evaluated at the start or the optimal condition times x dot x dot also evaluated at the optimal condition plus partial s partial t again evaluated at optimal condition so we have four terms in the lagrangian then we again write down the value of this lagrangian for the perturbed variables the perturbed variables are the perturbed state and the control variables so similarly we write write down uh, we call so the perturbed lagrangian l delta is l delta of x bar plus delta x star comma x bar dot star plus delta delta x dot comma u star plus delta u comma lambda comma t right and then uh, well we can always uh, expand all these well this uh, perturbed lagrangian so this becomes v of x bar plus delta x this is a start condition comma u star plus delta u comma uh, well comma t plus the rest of the values are the partial s partial x at the start condition times x dot x bar dot at start condition plus delta x so these are my perturbed values plus partial s uh, partial s partial t at start condition plus well what have what else have we got well plus we have the we have the plant condition as the constraint so lambda t there is no note that there is no perturbation in this quantity lambda the lagrange multiplier times f of x bar star plus delta x u bar star plus delta u comma t minus uh, minus the perturbed value of x dot x dot star plus delta x uh, delta x dot ok so so these these are my uh, perturbed values of lagrangian and then we have to write down the augmented performance index or uh, for the perturbed value so we write down my augmented performance index or the functional first at the original value or the or the optimal value so j a of u star is integral t0 to tf l dt and 
the perform uh, performance index at the perturbed value uh, will be well let me call this perturbed value as any other value other than the optimal value. So, the perturbed value comes out to be integral T 0 to T f plus delta T f notice that there is a perturbation in the integral as well because uh, the, the integral limits because we are allowed to vary our integration limits the upper limit right. So, this becomes L delta d t and then this integral can be broken down into two integrals as follows. And what we have is that uh, so, so now notice that uh, this particular second, the second integral, the the range of integration is very small, namely delta uh, delta t f. So we assume that. Uh, so in this small interval of uh, integration in the second, uh, let's say in this integral star, or let me call this as a, I can I can write down this Lagrangian. Uh, the perturbed value of the Lagrangian at its optimal value. So, so what I have is the second integral becomes integral from T f to T f plus delta T f L delta d t and this is L delta T f d t this is also equal to so, now we use our Taylor series approximation and expand our perturbed value of the Lagrangian at, at its optimal value up to first order. So, that is also equal to L at start condition plus partial L partial x, uh, this is also at start condition times delta x plus partial L partial x dot at start condition times delta x dot and plus notice that the only variables which are being perturbed are the state and the control variables. So, partial L partial uh, u times uh, times delta u. Okay. So, so that is it. So, all these derivatives are evaluated at the start condition times notice that uh, well, so this will be this is the integration from T f to T f plus delta T f. So, I have uh, a quantity delta T f being multiplied. Okay. So, so that is it. So, all now I have to do in, in which is in my next step is I have to take the perturbation of the of the perturbed performance index or the difference of the perturbed performance index with the original index or the optimal index. So, we are trying to write down our uh, our conditions for the first variation equal to 0. So, step 4 was write down write down the Lagrangian okay. and step 5 in step 5 I have evaluate the first variation evaluate first variation evaluate the first variation uh, using Taylor series right uh, and retain we are going to retain order delta terms or the first order terms. So, my first variation delta of j is equal to j a at u minus the augmented index j a at delta u right uh, well j a at u star. Okay. So, this becomes uh, integral in the original interval of L delta minus L uh, d t plus the integral uh, from T f to T f plus delta T f. So, that was also L delta evaluated at uh, well this is L evaluated not L delta, but L evaluated at T f notice so, this is our well we have taken L delta. Okay. So, 
So, this is L delta evaluated at T f times delta T f. Okay. So, then then we have to expand all these terms. So, notice that the first integral uh, we expand and see that the following terms arise. So, this is integral from T 0 to T f partial L partial x at the start condition delta x plus partial L partial x dot at start condition uh, delta x dot plus partial L partial uh, u times delta u uh, and this is also at the start condition and this is all notice that this is the variation up to first order times d t. So, we have taken the variation with respect to all the variables which are being perturbed namely the state and the control variables plus the term which is sitting outside the integral L delta at T f delta T f and then uh, notice that this quantity used using my integration by parts will become uh, partial L partial x dot delta x. So, this is at start condition delta x and then minus. So, this is from uh, this is from T 0 to T f evaluation minus integral of from T 0 to T f uh, partial partial T of partial L partial x dot right uh, delta x times d t. Okay. Okay, so, then so, which means the next set of things that we do is we retain this integral terms all inside the integral and then see what happens. So, we are going to now write down the integral terms which are the underlying terms this one, this one and this one and I see that this is also uh, T 0 to T f uh, partial L partial x minus d d t of partial L partial x dot uh, at start condition. Then we have delta x d t and then plus partial L partial u at start condition delta u d t right and then. So, this is all inside the integral and then the quantities which are outside the integral are as follows. So, I have L delta uh, at T f evaluated at T f times delta T f and then the, the additional uh, additional quantity which is then written outside the integral partial L partial x dot uh, at start condition delta x right and this is evaluated at T f because delta x at the starting point T 0 will be 0 we have fixed our starting time point. Okay. So, then I have to the next so that is my step 5 uh, my next step is to take the extremum to, to set up set up the extremum. and uh, set up the conditions of the extremum of the extremum and we see that uh, when we do uh, notice let us look look uh, look at the integration once more notice that our extremum will be zero uh, our first variation will be zero when again we have the euler lagrange being satisfied so the underlying quantity plus an additional quantity which is the control derivative plus plus the sum of two quantities outside the integral which will contribute to our natural boundary condition. Okay. So, what we have is the following. So, if I if I choose my lambda the Lagrange multiplier equal to lambda star which is which is the optimal optimal co-state function then at optimal condition I see that 
uh, first of all my Euler Lagrange equations are retrieved back d d t of partial l partial x dot at start condition is equal to 0. And let, let me call this relation A again my Euler Lagrange equation and then since since I have uh, we also have the optimal control condition. So, we have another constraint that comes through. So, since my my variation in u is u is arbitrary is arbitrary I see that uh, partial l partial u at start condition is also 0. Let me call this control condition uh, as b. So, this is my control state condition okay. and then all I am left with are the two terms which is sitting outside the integration uh, limit. And so, so, let me write down this these two remaining quantities the first variation the first variation reduces uh, to well let me write down step by step. So, it is so L delta. So, L delta when written down in the form of a Taylor series are going to be uh, L L star L star at uh, final time point times delta T f plus uh, plus partial L partial uh, partial x dot uh, at start condition times delta x right. Okay. So, these are my two terms and uh, and uh, we also have the plant condition which is the non holonomic constraint and that can also be found using the Lagrange multiplier setup. So, my, my condition 1 or the plant condition can also be can be written can be written using Lagrangian using Lagrangian. So, we see that partial L partial uh, lambda dot well partial L partial lambda at start condition will give me 0, we are going to retrieve back our condition 1 from this condition also known as let me call this C as my co-state condition or where co-state condition is a condition which retrieves back my Lagrange multiplier. And then well, so, so what I have is I have to finally process this these two terms which remains right. Uh, well, these two also have to be set equal to 0 because these are the two terms, uh, these are the two terms that remain. Well, uh, so to begin with the term that we have L delta, so this is evaluated. Uh, so, L is nearly uh, nearly constant in this small interval. So, let me denote it by L star here, not L delta, because inside this small interval the Lagrangian is nearly constant, right. So, this is L, L star. Okay. So, so now let us look at one more thing. Uh, now I need to, I need to write this, this bracketed quantity, this uh, this box quantity in a slightly uh, more convenient form. To do that, let me see what is this, uh, what are these variations, right? What are these variations? Uh, this is at delta T f. What are these variations? So if my uh, well, if my let let me try to see how these curves look like. So suppose from t zero to t f, I have uh, let's say x zero uh, to my starting point for the optimal curve is as follows. So this is my curve x star, and suppose the curve x star is being perturbed, and it looks like the following, or let me using let me draw a slightly simpler curve. So, this one and let me call this as this one. So, slightly more simpler curve right. So, my perturbed curve looks like the following 
So, what I am trying to do is I am trying to highlight the fact that delta x f uh, the variation at the final state variable is not equal to delta x at t f. You will see that there is a slight variation and that is why we need to be slightly careful. So, we need to write down this, this boxed relation in terms of delta x f. Okay. Uh, so, this is at t f. Okay, so, what we have is the following, we see that if this is my time point t f and uh, further I see that this quantity, uh, this, uh, this gap uh, between, the, uh, between the optimal curve and the perturbed curve is going to denote as the variation in my state variable at time point t f. So, this is the variation at t f and, uh, and notice that if this following Uh, this following uh, new time is T f plus delta T f, right. So, my, my variation delta x f is the perturbation from uh, the, from the uh, optimal curve to the perturbed curve, right. So, there is a slight difference between the two quantities. In particular, we will see that, uh, so we, we will see that they are not equal, right. So, then uh, so, so I am going to reformulate, let me call this as, uh, uh, let me call this as, so I have D now, right. So, I am going to reformulate our relation D, uh, noting, noting the following, note that my slope, my slope of the optimal curve is x bar dot star plus partial variation of x uh, bar dot and we see that this is this is part almost equal to uh, the the value delta of x f minus the value delta so so my uh, so so essentially this this particular value minus this particular value right so i see that this is also equal to delta x f minus delta x at T f divided by uh, delta T f, right. So, change in uh, the, the state variable divided by the change in time is going to give me the slope of the perturbed curve or we can rewrite this quantity as follows. So, we can rewrite, so it implies that my delta x f is delta x at T f plus x dot plus delta x uh, bar dot uh, times delta T f and uh, we see that notice that we have uh, we, we are now going to throw away some higher order terms especially the term delta square. So, this is almost equal to delta x f at T f plus x bar dot times delta T f right. So, so, x bar dot this is evaluated at the start condition, so star right or in particular my delta x at T f is delta x at f minus x dot star times delta T f. The whole idea of rewriting this uh, finding this relation is because we have a quantity sitting as variation of x at T f, we want to write it in the form of variation of x at f. Uh, by noting this small uh, relation between the, the two quantities. So, so let me call this as, as uh, d 1 and then I am going to rewrite, rewrite uh, d using, using this relation d 1 that I have found and I come to a point that uh, the new relation that I have is the following. So, this is l star minus partial l uh, partial x bar dot this is at the optimal condition times x bar dot star right times times uh, well this is evaluated at time point t f times delta t f 
plus partial L partial x bar dot uh, star uh, star evaluated at T f times delta x f okay, and this is set equal to 0. So, so, let me denote this as notice that this is nothing but our natural boundary condition let me denote this by number. So, let me continue numbering something. Uh, so, so far we have numbered a b c d. So, let me denote it by e. Okay. So, e is nothing but our natural boundary condition. So, now I have set up all my uh, first variation conditions namely the Euler Lagrange, the, the control condition as well as finally, the natural boundary condition plus we have an extra condition in the form of a co-state condition which is nothing but the plant condition. Okay. Well, it seems that this setup is quite complicated. So, let us slightly simplify this description by introducing our Hamiltonian formulation or what we call as the Pontegrin H function. Okay.